Archie Manning, a uh, friend of the show, and of course, uh, the former Ole Miss Saints quarterback. And the Book of Manning last night saw the uh, documentary on the mothership. And I loved it. I really did because I saw a father there, not somebody who was creating quarterbacks. And I think Arch is given credit um, about, you know, sort of creating these quarterbacks. Like he's got this factory there and I'm going to roll another one off the assembly line. And it just showed him as being a father and the importance of that. His father committed suicide, maybe made him a better father, more attentive or understood that it's so fleeting. And uh, Archie joins us now. Uh, hesitations with doing that, Arch, and open yourself up to a documentary? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, Dan. Um, I, um, Rory is a really neat guy. Came to me, and you know, the SEC had this, they have this going. They wanted me to do it. My old Miss wanted me to do it, so I said yes. Uh, they got started, and I, I started thinking about it. Kind of had a full plate. Peyton was going through these surgeries. You know, this was a couple years ago. And I called him back, and I said, uh, "We're going, we're going to nix this. I just, I can't do it." And um, <laughs> he was a little distraught. I guess it was kind of a rude thing to do. Anyway, a few months later, Olivia asked me how the documentary was coming. I said, "Well, I nixed it," and she said, "Well, you're going to go back and do it." <laughs> and you know Olivia pretty well. She doesn't really order me around very much. She said, "You're going to do this. Your grandchildren need to see this story." So I did. Uh, I really didn't do anything after that except be interviewed and, and give a big box of all my children, you know, my old, old video stuff to Rory, and he took it from there. My toughest part watching the documentary was what? <laughs> I, I didn't have a problem. Uh, you know, if my mother was still living, I probably wouldn't have, you know, let, the, let my father's suicide come out. I'm 64 years old, and... I, you know, I, actually, you wouldn't believe the um, emails and texts I've already gotten from some people who've had a, a similar thing in their life and it, it felt like it was good therapy for them. Um, the toughest thing was your old buddy Cooper, you know, life of the party, good, fun, funny <laughs> guy, and uh, he'd done this interview and kind of it, it kind of got to him a little bit. So that, that was kind of, that was you know, that was a tough time in our all our lives, and I, I was really telling the truth there. How well you, you may remember those days, you know, how well Cooper handled that and the good spirit that he's always had. But that was, that was kind of hard to watch. But when you knew that something was wrong with Cooper, um, mm -hmm. how do you process that as a father? Because I could tell where I mean, that you and Peyton were on the verge of crying. I thought when you were talking about it. Well, Cooper, Cooper was the first one that that. He's the one who started this stuff about, I, I want to be a college football player. I remember I remember the first time he came to me, he's like a freshman in high school, skinny guy, he said, Dad, I want to play college football. And I immediately started telling him how great I thought Division three football is. I said, these guys are the ones that really have fun playing college football because I didn't know how good he could be if he wanted to do that. And um, There's nothing wrong with having, having goals, but – I, I, I tell you, he worked really hard at it. You know, he was a quarterback then, then he moved to wide receiver. And, you know, he didn't have 100 offers like Peyton, but he worked really hard to – he had eight or nine, and he, he deserved them. And it was such a it was such a reward for him to, to, to get scholarship offers and go through the recruiting, make that decision, and then just, bam, it was over. And so it was, it, it was hard. It was tough. If he had stayed healthy at Ole Miss – Mm -hmm. Would Peyton have gone to Ole Miss? Yeah, probably so. They they really enjoyed playing together that year, and and Peyton liked Ole Miss. He didn't have anything against Ole Miss, uh, but they were looking down the throat of some. You know, it wasn't for sure, but there was a lot of rumors about some possible probation. But he he would have probably gone. They were that close. They had fun. I mean, that's you know they worked out a lot together, played together a lot. I, I never was really privy to it, but I, I know they had these plans, you know, and um, so he, he probably would have. He's Archie Manning uh, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. And I could also tell where, you know, you're not creating quarterbacks. This isn't, uh, you know, Marv Marinovich with Todd Marinovich. You, you were trying to create kids. You were trying to be a dad. Um, you seem uncomfortable when you're given credit for raising quarterbacks. Well, I just I said in the documentary I, I don't like that perception because I think people just assume that uh, you and I have known each other a long time. Uh, 
you know, I, I'm no exception. Uh, you know, majority of people in our country make family a, a priority. So, um, you know, if they if they were a great piano player, that's what their goal would be, and they'd worked hard at that. That that I'd be I'd be just as proud. You know, I'm just as proud of Cooper as I'm Peyton and Eli. He is he is really successful in business, and he's a great father and a great husband. So, he, he I, I'm absolutely ju- just as proud of him as I am of the other two. So we we we, we like other American families. You try to raise your kids and hope and pray that it turns out good. I couldn't help but think, you know, I lost my father. He was 54. I was 25 mm-hmm. at the time, and, uh, you know, it wasn't suicide, but he's killing himself smoking cigarettes. And, I, yeah. you know, when you lose your dad, how it affects you as a parent. How how mm-hmm. did that – and I don't know well, if it's consciously – I just felt like it was so young. It just hit, it slapped me right in the face, you know. So it, it took me – I think it was a while. It was so fast. There was so much going on. Now, I had a great support system. I mean, I, my, my mother and sister, they, they were strong. And uh, I go back to school, and, and I was dating Olivia. She was wonderful. But my teammates, especially uh, the coaching staff at Ole Miss, Johnny Vault was the head coach. He really, he really, in a lot of ways, you know, I got all of a sudden I got a lot of attention, Dan, and I'm getting asked to go all over the country as a All-American quarterback. And, you know, you don't know if you're ready for that when you're 20 years old. And he, he gave me great, you know, he, he told me, how to behave, and uh, he told you, you get a haircut before you go <laughs> go go to that banquet, and and you be humble in your response, and you give credit to your teammate. You know things that fathers need to be saying to their sons at a time like that. So he he he, he wore that hat for me. So I, I had a great support system, but I think more than anything, as I began to have some success. Uh, it made me miss my dad even more. I just thought about how much fun it would be to share that with him. He he was a football fan, and um, you know he he would he was pr- he would have been proud of me, and we could have had so much fun together. I just thought about it. I used to think about it when I got in pro ball, you know. Uh, get invited to go to the Bing Crosby. How much fun would that be? Go play in the, <laughs> go play in that golf tournament. And take your dad with you out there. So, um, yeah, you know, just you just kind of miss those things. Yeah, I get angry at my dad too. He missed everything, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, and you know, yeah. you you just it makes you value treasure what you're able to experience. I love the video in the backyard with the boys, <laughs> and and it was their personality that we know now. I mean, Peyton's orchestrating. Eli is sort of nonchalant, and Cooper's entertaining. I mean, making jokes. Yeah, yeah it was kind of like that. They, I, only thing I, I told Roy, I think I think we got Peyton crying a little too much in this thing. I don't remember him crying that much. Cooper and his buddies were pretty, pretty tough on him, but. Uh, Did Peyton have a problem? That, so, you know, I I turned. I was probably not very smart. I, I turned over all that video without looking at it. I didn't have time to go look at it to see what it was. Peyton get upset that you know, you're, you're ever, we're seeing him cry? I hope not. He's busy. He's got a lot on his plate. You know, it's funny. People say, well, how did they react to it? I said, well, they both watched it about a month before, and this was pretty typical. Eli said, yeah, it's good. And Peyton said, well, there's about seven things in there we need to change. <laughs> now, it was really just mistakes. You know, he said, that's not accurate. That, that didn't happen in 1993. It happened in 1991. I said, okay, okay. Uh, no, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. And, and I'm also curious about, as you're seeing Peyton now with what he's overcome, and you've seen him his entire uh-huh. career, obviously, have you seen him play better during a you know this a short period of time here with three games, gosh, uh, maybe not to start the season, Dan. You know that year. What year was that for the twenty two forty nine? You know he had he had not only Marvin and Reggie and Stokely going full blast. They had Ed, you know Edron gained fifteen hundred yards yeah. that year. That was that was pretty complete. Uh, but you know I don't know if they started. This good. He's got a lot of weapons. Um, they got they got to stay healthy. You know how that is. That's a big blow losing their left tackle. Uh, again, it gets harder. You know when you're successful, everybody's trying to figure out a way to to, to stop it. And uh, if, if if one person finds some little flaw there, everybody's you know you can't run and hide in this league. But uh, hopefully they can stay healthy and they're they're playing well. Well, you got Peyton playing so well, and then 
what's going on with Eli? I mean, he yeah, was. Yeah, that, this, that, boy, it, 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 you know, I'm not sure we can enjoy it like we want to because we feel we feel bad for the Giants. We feel bad for Eli. They're they're struggling. Uh, it's, it's, you know, the off se- kind of off season. They had a bunch of surgeries and uh, preseason. Uh, one one great, and they just they're really struggling. Uh, I, football, I said it last night. Now football takes funny turns. You really don't don't ever know, but hopefully they can they can hang hang tough and and, and get something turned around. I know uh, as you always do. Joining us, uh, courtesy Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year Award. So I'll let you get in uh, your information there before. Well, we... I appreciate it. you're always nice to let us talk about this. It, I, I'm privileged. It's my eighth year to be the spokesman of the Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year Award, uh, the only head coaching uh, award that, that supports charity and scholarship. Dan, I think what's neat about it, we honor four coaches uh, in Southern California at the BCS Championship this year. There'll be a coach from East Division that'll win this award, and all four of them will get fifty thousand dollars toward charity and twenty thousand dollars to their alumni association. Liberty Mutual has stepped up in these eight years and given almost two million dollars to a hundred charities and colleges. So. Uh, everybody wants to participate in this, so it, it's open. Uh, it's the voting goes through December third, and go to coachoftheyear dot com. Uh, you know the award exemplifies responsibility, integrity, sportsmanship, and excellence on and off the field. Good to visit with you. Uh, tell, you tell Libby I said hello, and uh, I will. You're, that, not, you're always nice to have me. Thank you, Arch. Good to talk to you, buddy. Okay, okay pal. Uh, uh, Archie, man. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.